Power World has been out for several months at this point, and I have been waiting for somebody to drop a video on YouTube that says they solved the lore, they figured it out, and after searching for it, I haven't found a video. So I'm gonna make my own, and I'm here to tell you today that going through all of the lore entries and the diary entries in Power World, I have solved the biggest question in that game. And if I'm right, hats off to Pocket Pair for putting this whole story together. And for those of you out there wondering what that question is, where did the pals come from? So if you played Power World and didn't know that they had any lore or history in the game, I wouldn't blame you. You see, if you're the do stuff type of gamer, you probably got into the game, went out, captured as many pals as you could, built a super swanky base, then turned around, eviscerated all the bosses, captured all of the alphas, and did all of that work, and maybe sort of here and there you might have grabbed a diary entry, but overall you went in, you dominated the way that you should have, and you're gonna leave this stuff to all the redline guys like me. In my last Power World video, I theorized that through the introduction of pals into the economy, it basically wiped out all economic trade for basically humans. Today, I'm here to tell you that it was all the humans' fault for creating pals in the first place. That's right, pals are not natural to this world. They are a manifestation of the magic that humans were meddling with. So first things first, we have to address the massive elephant in the room. I'm sorry, I mean tree. I mean the really, really big tree that like if it existed would be like the eighth wonder of the world. This thing is so big you would probably be able to see it from space. Just to add some context, Palpagos Island has been confirmed to be about 16 square kilometers wide, which for those of us who speak normal speak, that's about 10 square miles. And that means this tree is absolutely freaking huge. However, as noted in the game, the tree and the island are hidden from the rest of the world in a fog. There's something odd that bothers me since I arrived here. Far off in the distance, I can see what looks like an enormous tree, big enough to be called the world tree spoken about in so many myths. Still, it's so large that no amount of fog would be enough to obscure it from view outside the island. The only hypothesis I can come up with is that something other than fog enveloping this island prevents it from being seen by the outside world. In other words, some kind of mechanism must be preventing it from being seen from the outside. It seems likely that the mysterious powers these pals have have something to do with them. Now, the world tree comes from a lot of different myths and legends and a lot of variations. However, one thing that's pretty consistent through most of those is that the world tree is actually the center of the globe or it's at the center point on the globe and it may possess magical properties. In another diary entry, we're told that the pals are uh, magical creatures instead of science-based and they basically just appear and disappear after they die. After living alongside pals for some time now, I've come to realize they don't breed like normal animals. All it takes is the presence of a male and a female pair. With some time, an egg simply appears. Furthermore, it seems that the bodies of the dead pals simply vanish. Where do pals come from? And where do they go? These mysteries have no end in sight. Obviously, this is just a cheeky way to explain game mechanics, but it kind of opens up a Pandora's box for us redline guys to tie it all together. Okay, so let's digest this. Pals just kind of manifest, but they haven't always. There was a point in history when pals weren't there. So what's the connecting point between Pal World and not so Pal World? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Paldium. That's right, the magical, mysterious type of ore that's found in Power World. Now, aside from it being the MacGuffin metal that just allows you to build and craft better armor as you continue throughout the game, why is it here? Well, that's where we get into one of the major points of the theory so far. You see, there's an IRL change that happens in rock and soil that would actually explain the existence of Paldium and its magical properties. Metasomatism refers to the process whereby a pre-existing igneous sedimentary or metamorphic rock undergoes compositional and mineralogical transformations associated with chemical reactions triggered by the reaction of fluids, so-called metasomic agents, which invade the protolith. 
Okay, so let's simplify that a little bit. Basically, water carries a bunch of minerals down, and then as that water flows over rock and different soil, those minerals decide, hey, I like this rock, that's my new home. And then it kicks out all the non-stable stuff that that rock doesn't need, and then over the course of time, uh, basically the minerals just gather up together. It's how we see things in the world like zinc deposits and so on. If there are any geologists here, please let me know if I explained that well in layman's terms, and please let me know if I'm right, but I'm pretty sure this explains what I'm about to tell you. So follow me on this one. Tree gives off the magic. The magic flows over everything on the island. There are certain rocks and soil that are susceptible to having magical deposits imparted into them, thusly creating this metal that can now, or this ore that can now be used for metal crafting and such. You see, once the ancient people in Power World found out that they have magical metal, I absolutely believe that they would have tried to use this magical metal in a way to harness its magical capabilities. And I think that's exactly what they did. I've worked out that the ancients have lived in luxury alongside pals, yet due to some unknown reason, that way of life was lost. Perhaps it was a massive natural disaster, or maybe a struggle broke out for scarce pals and resources. Then again, maybe it has something to do with the teleportation I experienced in the tower. Supposing that some power is responsible for that spatial teleportation, perhaps similar to how the pal spheres work, what would happen if that power were utilized in other ways? A power so great that humans could not control it, perhaps that is what destroyed the civilization on this island. So Pocket Pair is already dropping hints that the ancient civilization tried to meddle with magic because they were really power hungry. After finding out that Paldium was absorbing the magic of the tree, it makes the most sense that they would take Paldium and start working on various different structures throughout the world in order to focus that magic. And I believe that these happen to be the towers, the various different metal cities that still exist, and the Alpha Dungeons. And before you say, wait a minute, how do you know that the structures were built out of Paldium and to harness power? And before I say, thank you for interrupting my well-laid theory, here's the diary entry. After a long journey, I finally managed to arrive at the tower. I am nearly certain it's a relic from an ancient civilization. However, I have no guesses as to why it was built. Still, I can feel that there's an energy flowing throughout the place, similar to that of Paldium ore. When I touched an inscribed stone slab, I found myself transported to some strange place. What I found there was an enormous pal and a human in control of it. I ran away in terror. Before I knew it, I found myself returned near the tower. So anyway, now that I've answered your first hypothetical question that you interrupted me with, let's get back to the second one. How did these structures gather the power? It makes the most sense that the boss towers and the dungeons were the ancient technology used to harness the magical power for themselves. By erecting the massive structures that were able to absorb magical energy, they were able to put all of that in one place and focus that magical energy. Because if it was able to absorb magic before, why can't it still absorb magic now? That's the reason that the pals in these structures are so much larger than any of the other pals in the rest of the island. Other larger pals can be found around the world in caves near the magical underground trees, which are most likely just sproutlings of the world tree, in the wider world around the massive metal structures that exist, in underground mine shafts that have been completely cleaned out already, and near the cave entrances. All of the large pals seem to be around areas where the magic is focused or was focused at one point in time, such as like the mine shafts. But this is where the story gets a little twisted because I think that the pals were an unintended consequence of meddling with the magic. In their quest for power, I believe that the ancients were trying to channel the magical power into themselves and unintentionally, turned themselves into pals. Don't believe me? Look at this pal deck entry for Robin Quill, a pal that is very similar to humans who hunt and live in the forests. It may prove to be a key for understanding what pals are and how they diverged from humans so long ago. How pals diverged from humans or how humans were turned into pals? Hmm? If that's not enough, let's take a look at another pal deck entry. That definitely made the community laugh when the game was released, but when you look at it in the context of what I'm talking about here, it makes a lot more sense. So 
Here is the PAL deck entry for Lavender. Seeking a knight of love, it is always chasing someone around. At first, it only showed interest in other PALs, but in recent years, even humans have become the target of its debauchery. Again, that I'm not saying that's not a weird entry and it's definitely kind of cringe. But when you start to think of PALs as not animals in this world, but you start to think of them as creatures that were once human, it completely changes the context of that PAL deck entry. So that leaves the question, what stopped the rest of the humans from being turned into PALs on the island? Well, that leads me to my final diary entry for you guys today. Looking at the diary entry for Zoe Rain, one of the bosses of the towers, I can make a pretty convincing case as to why it stopped. I've started to wonder, why am I guarding this big tower again? I've always thought it was obvious since father also used to do this, but now I think about it and I have no idea why. From what I've heard about it, they say there's a legend passed down on this island. They say this tower is somehow related to that legend and that this is some big, great power. What kind of power, I wonder? Even if that's true, why does this power have to be protected? Anyway, even though I don't really know why I'm here, I'm always here, protecting this tower. There are other towers around the island. They say people like me guard them all. And there it is, the towers, the ancient tool used to harness magic, but unintentionally turned a bunch of people into pals, now have guards. And it makes total sense. In the aftermath of so many people turning themselves into pals and causing terror and havoc all over the place, a group of people would have probably gotten together and decided, yay, yeah, maybe we should uh, not let people into the, uh, the pal towers, you know, those places that make you not human anymore and instead turn you into a wild magical creature. Yeah, maybe we should put people there to stop that from happening. And before you say, but why aren't the guards turned into pals, Royce? Well, that's simple because what protects them from the metamorphosis that happens inside the tower are the giant freaking pals that are literally represented that way because they are lightning rods for absorbing the magical energy. That's why the guard pals are like the biggest ones in the game because they are just sitting there acting as these magical focus points, keeping their guards safe. After going through all of this, I think I pretty much just debunked my entire last Power World theory video. Like, I will leave a link for that down in the description below or it'll pop up over here somewhere so you guys can go check it out and see exactly how dumb I was. But even more so than proving me wrong, this whole theory proves why pals are so good at crafting and building and farming and basically doing all of the things that humans can do. And they can do it instinctively. Well it's probably because they were human. I also think this is probably where the worship of the pals came from in the ancient days. You see all the statues of like Anubis and the jet dragon and the two horse knight dudes that I haven't caught yet. Well, you see statues of all of these people. My guess is that those were probably some of the first people to have ever been turned into pals. And because there were very limited at the time, they probably functioned in society very well. With that being said, I think I have solved the mystery of Pal World. That pocket pair has been trying to hide from us. Let me know what you guys think of this video. It would mean so much to me. To close this out, I want to say thank you to all of you for checking out this video. This channel is so close to 2,700 subscribers and I literally can't say anything else, but that's all because of you out there who are watching these videos and subscribing to the channel. So thank you so much to everybody who's been doing that. I kind of forget to say that a lot, but I really want to make it a point to say thank you to you guys even more than I have in the past. And also for those of you who have checked out this video and you've made it this far, even if you don't subscribe, thank you so much for being here too, because like you just being here and taking a chance on this small channel means more than you realize. So before I keep going on, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And as always, until next time, Cheers, everybody. You see, there's a real world. You see, there's a real. <laughs> there's actually a real. Uh, a real, real. Uh, come on. Igneous, sedimentary, or metaphor. Metaphor. Metamorphic. Metamorphic, not metaphoric. Fuck.